There's some water you should never drink. Now I literally floated in the cooling pond of Chernobyl with plutonium and uranium in the sediment below me. But you can't help but wonder what the radioactivity has done to the creatures that live here. And that's water I wouldn't drink. And about a mile from where I'm at right now, a girl died from a braining amoeba from the water that I literally play in every day. This is a toxic dump site. Ah! Oh, there's like diapers right here. Like actual diapers. The diapers might have absorbed uh, some of the yucky stuff. That's nasty. You know that pretty much any water around here is gonna have a lot of bad bacteria or viruses or protozoa and you wouldn't wanna drink it, but I'm gonna show you that with a little bit of knowledge about how to filter and treat the water, you can actually drink it safely. So I'm gonna collect some of it right now. There's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that's not good for you. And at the end, I'll take a drink. Let's get started. This is not just pure water. It's not just H2O. And looking at it, you can probably see that. There's a lot of clay particulates in the water, but you're also looking at a lot of other things. You have dissolved salts, potential metals, heavy metals, and then you have things like protozoa, bacteria, and viruses. So it's not clean to drink. Now, every year, two billion people have to drink stuff like this. And there's about a half a million people every year that die because of water-related illnesses. So it's a big problem. And we have to figure out how to properly clean this. Now, you might not think that this is a problem we have to deal with in a developed country, like I'm here in the US, but you do at times. Hurricane Katrina came through, and there was five days before they got water to the Superdome. So it begs the big question, how do you clean and purify water just like this? And I'll get to all of that, but first let's look at exactly what could be in this water. First you have protozoas and worms, they would be the biggest. Amoebas, giardia, cryptosporidium, those are all bad things that will make you sick. Bacteria can cause problems too, like cholera, certain E. coli strains, salmonella, campylobacter, and dysenteria, all stuff you don't want. And viruses can be a hundred times smaller than those bacteria. That includes infectious hepatitis A and E, rotavirus, norovirus, and smaller than that, you have heavy metals, chemicals, microplastics, and toxins that are dissolved in the water. And there isn't really a treatment option which will work for all of those, and I suppose that's a little bit bad news, so let's get into it. One option is UV light. You can get UV light in a little stirrupin like this. You turn it on, you stick it into your water bottle, you wait 30 to 90 seconds, and it will blast all the cell walls of all the bad microorganisms. Now, this works when you're in a clear mountain stream, and that's where I've used it most, because it penetrates through the water. Now, you need penetration of a few centimeters uh, around the pen to sterilize stuff. Now, if you look at this, it's a good size water bottle, but there's so many clay particles in it that the UV light won't penetrate very far through, so it's a very poor option if your water is murky like this, but it's nice to know that there is an option using UV light. All right, the next option is chemical treatment, and the most common ones are iodine, like in pills like this, really small, convenient, or you could use chlorine, which might come in your household bleach. Now, you're gonna have to get really precise with how many drops of bleach you put in your water, because that could be bad for you, but you can look that up online. These ones are really common for hikers. They're little iodine pills. So all you do in a quart is take two of them, drop them in here. This is one liter bottle, which is about the same as a quart. And you now have to let this wait 30 minutes. And this will kill almost all of the microorganisms. Now I say almost all because crypto, cryptosporidium, is very resistant to chlorine and to iodine. So in that case, you would get rid of everything, but you would still have the risk of getting that disease, which is a problem. It also doesn't get rid of heavy metals, and you're gonna be drinking all of this clay particulate. Now, if you don't like the taste of iodine in your water, that is also a negative, you can get uh, a two-pack where you have a neutralizer. So I taped the two together. It's a nice way to keep them in your bag together without losing it, but that, that's kind of handy, and it makes sure you kill most of the, the bad stuff. Now, boiling by far is the best method to kill everything. That's what I got from the experts at the WHO. There are a few problems with boiling. Uh, first of all, you have to let the water get to a boil. Freaking fried. Darn thing's broken. In about 90 seconds to two minutes, you will kill all of the microorganisms. Now, the recommendation, of course, is five to 10 minutes because even at two minutes, you just want to make sure you're getting everything, so why not wait a little bit longer? Oh, our water's boiling. Look at this. So we've got a pretty good boil going on right now. Now, the problem with boiling 
is that there's a lot of fuel that it takes. You potentially could break it, like mine wasn't working at the beginning. Darn thing's broken. And then you have all this particulate matter in there, which is disgusting. I'm gonna pour it, pour it out so you can see what the water still looks like. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh my God. What was in my container? I would want to filter it before I drink it. Let's move on to filtering techniques. Filtering is the next option, and all of these filters are gonna work somewhat similar. They're a little bit like a coffee press. So they have a certain pour size, and you press the water through it, either by pressing it or sucking it, and then it's gonna filter out everything over the pour size. So oftentimes it'll filter out all the protozoa, uh, some of the large particulates. It'll definitely filter out bacteria, but then some of them don't filter out the smallest things like viruses. So let me show you a couple of the different options. This is a life straw. It's very tiny. It's kind of a new product that's hit the market. It's not something I had when I was in college traveling around. You can pop the top off of this. You stick this end in the water and then you just suck it up. Now the problem is you have to be right at the water's edge, which is tricky at times. It's a little bit hard to use. You have to bend down and you can't really filter it into anything. You wouldn't want to share it though. I'd give you some, but you got to drink out of the straw. COVID, you know. It's handy in a survival situation. That's where this method from Sawyer is actually kind of nice. You scoop up the water in this bag and then you screw this on the top and then you can actually either squirt that into your mouth or you can squirt it into a bottle. Go ahead. Want some? Or they have gravity systems where you can let it drain into another bag. So that's kind of cool. And I've also used pump systems where you have a porcelain filter and you pump it through that filter. I use that on the Grand Canyon. What we would do is take these large bags from the river. We then let the sediment particulate settle out of it. And then at the very top, we would filter that water into our water bottles. It would take a long time with the pumps, but it worked pretty effectively on the Grand Canyon. The last option I want to show you is this little system from Grail. It is essentially a coffee press. You can think of it like that. So you put your bad water in here and then you take this and you press it down in here and the filters at the bottom and it will slowly filter out all of the stuff. <sighs> kind of have to put your full body weight on it. And we'll see how much of the particulate this gets out. Holy smokes, look at this. Check this out how clear this is. Look at that, that was right from the muddy river. You see that? Isn't that clear? I was trying to show you how clear it was. You see how clear that is? That's clear. Good though. And this product is marketed as having very small pore sizes, enough to get out viruses. It also says it will get out heavy metals, but again, that's not exactly true. It will filter out some of them. The heavy metals are small. There are a lot of them dissolved into the water itself. I feel pretty comfortable drinking this. Now, you have to remember that the very smallest of things are organic particles, including chemicals, bad chemicals like pesticides. Uh, you have toxins, you also have heavy metals, and those are things that are really hard to get out with traditional methods of purification. But also I want you to understand that if you're a through hiker, if you're just wandering through the woods or you're in a survival situation, you don't really have to worry about heavy metals. And this all came from the expert I talked to at the WHO. He said, if you're worried about mercury poisoning or lead poisoning, or arsenic, the first thing you do is you kind of make sure you look at the water source and you're not right downstream of a gold mine. <laughs> but those types of poisoning are things that happen to people over long periods of time. So mercury poisoning from a lake, you have to be drinking that for a long time. Lead poisoning from pipes, the same thing. It doesn't happen right away. So if you're just wandering through an area, you don't have to worry about that. That's some gunky water. So there you have a few things to think about, ways to filter, purify, clean your water when you're out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Tastes really good. I would feel pretty confident with at least this last method because I know there's not a lot of particulates in there. Mm. But now you know what are the positives and the negatives of each. Normal. Now this is part of a larger series, eight parts, everything from fire and rope to water that you can see on our Stone Age Man YouTube channel. It's also on stoneageman.com. This video is actually continued education for our book, Mother Nature is Not Trying to Kill You, something Haley and I wrote. You can get it cheaper if you go over to our Patreon page. It's one of the perks. We only have a limited number, so go check it out right now. I'm also leaving product links to all of the things I talked about below. So if you wanna click on those, uh, get your kit set up, then we are actually supported by that, so that's really handy. Stay tuned for the entire series, which you can see right here. You can watch more videos and you can subscribe to the channel, which helps us out. Thanks everybody, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, that's so good, I needed that water. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs>
here.